So everybody, Apple just released another beta version of 18.1 and we are now on beta 5 and we're going to talk about all the differences that we found so far because there are some nice quality of life updates including some new RCS additions that are really important for people to be able to text between Android and iPhone seamlessly. But without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 18.1 beta 5 and see if it's worth you upgrading. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. And just to preface this, I am running 18.1 beta 5 on my M4 iPad Pro. And the first thing we're gonna do is check out the actual build size. So as you can see here for beta 5, we're looking at about one gig of total storage. So make sure you have at least two or three gigs worth of storage in order to make sure that this installs and installs correctly. And then in terms of the build number, if you go into our settings and go into the about section, go into iPad version, we are now on 22B5054 lowercase e, which means we are getting closer to the RC edition and ultimately the public release. So the 18.1, we should see a release date in probably late October for everybody to at least start to test out and try out on the public side, bringing Apple intelligence to all the supported devices, which we'll touch on at the end of the video. Now, before we get into the what's new, I do like to talk about battery life first and foremost, because I've been using the beta program since it released, and it's good to see how the battery life has held up over time. So if we type on the battery, and then we go over the last 10 days, we're getting about two hours and 25 minutes of screen on time. But if we go on a day like Thursday, we had six and a half hours of screen on time on only a 50% charge, meaning we could have gotten way more screen on time, probably double that. I don't know if I could have gotten a full 13 hours, but maybe 10 hours at least. And then another day here like Tuesday, four and a half hours with about 65% utilization in terms of battery. We could have easily gotten about seven or eight hours. Same thing goes for the day like Monday, four and a half hours at about 60 to 65%. So battery life has been pretty decent on my M4 iPad Pro. Now let me know in the comment down below if you guys are using an older iPad Pro that's running 18.1, maybe an M1 or an M2. I'm curious to know how that's been doing with battery life because again, I had an M1 iPad Pro previous to this and the battery life ended up being relatively atrocious towards the end of it. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that if you open up the notes application, there is a brand new button on the top corner over here or the top middle, which is gonna be your Apple intelligence button. So this is just another way to access Apple intelligence because as of right now, there's a bunch of ways that you can do it. So if you wanna select text and you wanna maybe get Apple intelligence to proofread it, you will get some notifications down here in this autocorrect section where it shows you how to proofread, rewrite, or then even have another Apple intelligence button right here. You can also right click or two finger click to get the writing tools from Apple intelligence to give you this menu right here. And then finally the new button, which is up here, gives you that same exact menu. So I can have it being proofread. So if I proofread it, it'll proofread it for a second. It, as you can see, it capitalized iPad, it capitalized right here, and you can see what changes were made. They added a period over here, they added a comma over here. So also says that this button is just another form or way to actually interact with Apple intelligence directly in the notes application. The next change has to do with control center. So if we go into our settings and then go into the control center tab, we actually get a brand new button. As you can see, the control center settings menu is a little bit bare bones, but they did add a new one, which is called reset control center. So if you get to the point where maybe you have way too many things going on in your control center, you can just press reset and it'll reset the control center to how it was from a factory standpoint. So that's kind of nice if you do start to add a bunch of them on there. And then secondly, control center, if we go to add some new widgets, we did get some new connectivity controls. So if we go down to the connectivity section, we did get two new toggles. I believe it was the VPN toggle. And then also there is a cellular toggle if you do have a data cellular iPad or even iPhone for that matter. So two new toggles in control center plus the reset of control center, some nice new additions. Another new addition to beta five, which is a little bit more on the niche side is that they added the functionality to show control center when creating a shortcut. Unfortunately, previously this was not even an option, but now you can actually show hide toggle ask each time or shortcut input if you want to bring up control center as part of some sort of shortcut that you're creating. So now that's an option built into the shortcuts application. Something else that came up that I guess was a fix to the beta four update was that if you bring up your keyboard and bring up your emoji keyboard specifically, and if you scroll down to where you have your stickers and then finally your memojis, you got these three dots. Now with these three dots, now with these three dots, it kind of showed a blank screen, but now you have the ability to kind of change things up. And as you can see, it's kind of looking at what I'm saying in my mouth, but now this is the new setting for memoji. So you can create a new memoji, edit, duplicate, or delete it completely. And then also if you continue to scroll, you should get a plus button up here. So if you press a plus button, you do have the memoji situation happening. So create your own memoji, let the camera capture your expressions as you find a perfect look. So we'll get started here. And this is where you start to see, again, this is not a new situation. It's just something that was fixed previously that wasn't working before. I thought this was gonna be a way to create AI generated emojis or animojis or memojis, whatever they're called nowadays. 
as well as the image playgrounds, but those are still missing in this beta 5 update. And then lastly, there is a brand new setting in your Apple account. So if you go into Apple accounts and then go to sign in and security, and then all the way at the bottom, there'll be an automatic verification, which is a new settings menu that allows you to automatically verify and access apps and websites much faster and easier. So you bypass all the captcha S's in apps and on the web by allowing iCloud to automatically and privately verify your device and account. If you learn more, that gives you all the information you need to know about this new verification. But that is everything new with the new Beta 5 update. And then in terms of performance, I am really enjoying the performance situation of Beta 5 and Beta 4 specifically because we had that for an entire week. So overall, I have been very happy with iPadOS and how stable it's been overall. There have been some smaller issues that are very niche when it comes to LumaFusion specifically, and then the new 60 frames per second on iPhones running iOS 18, where it does make you go into high efficiency mode, kind of making it annoying to deal with when it comes to editing in LumaFusion. But again, that's something more specific, but overall iPadOS has been very stable if you guys do wanna try it out, but let's finish up this video. So that will just about do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, there weren't too many tangible differences, but there were a few, and there were a few important ones, like being able to have easy access to Apple intelligence, inside of the notes application, some new additions to RCS support for different carriers and different regions. So overall, we're starting to tighten up because I do believe 18.1 should release towards the end of October, finally giving us Apple intelligence to all supported devices. And those devices are just for people to know the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, as well as all the new iPhone 16s. And then of course, any M powered iPad or MacBook. So M1 iPad Pro and M1 MacBook Air fall into those categories with the newer ones being a little bit more efficient when it comes to Apple intelligence. We are still missing things like Genmoji and Image Playground. So those are still yet to come. I'm assuming with an 18.2 update. So, so probably towards December and even later if you're not in the US, but that remains yet to be seen. For now, Apple intelligence is getting better, is starting to recognize things that we like, what we don't like, how we speak and things like that. So overall, I'm relatively happy with Apple Intelligence. It just still hasn't been fully adopted in my workflow personally, which I'm sure will come with time. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And also leave a comment if you are updated to 18.1 and what your overall thoughts are on Apple Intelligence. If you have been one of those people that's been using it on a daily basis, very curious to know where it fits in your workflow, if it even does at all. But that'll do it, everybody. If you want to watch more videos like this one, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right here. And I personally think you're going to like this video over here. But that'll do it. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.